The activity on our nearest star is increasing as we approach the maximum in its 11 year cycle. We are seeing more sunspots, flares and coronal mass ejections that can affect the Earth, leading to spectacular aurora like those seen worldwide in early June 2024. But solar weather can also be dangerous, causing power surges in electrical power grids, damaging satellites through particle bombardment and exposing pilots and astronauts to high doses of radiation. We need better solar weather forecasts and better warning systems. The upcoming ESA Vigil mission to the fifth Lagrange point will provide an unprecedented early view of the Sun before it rotates towards the Earth. This year, the FDL Solar Eruptions team is providing an early warning system for predicting solar eruptions based on a combination of multimodal data from solar observing satellites, including Vigil. This work has the potential to fundamentally improve the capabilities of our space weather forecasting system for the benefit of the entire planet. Hello everyone, my name is Aishwarya. Today we're sharing the results of our eight week sprint on solar eruption forecasting. Imagine predicting a solar storm before it disrupts our technology and lives. Our research is making this a reality. And so the solar eruption team is dedicated to protecting our world from these cosmic events. Let me introduce our research team. We have Hannah, Dominica, myself, Aishwarya, and Vexen, supported by our faculty, Philippe, Daniele, Giacomo, and Martin. Our interdisciplinary team brings together expertise in machine learning and heliophysics, which is crucial in tackling our challenge. Let's dive into our challenge. So here's a brief clip on solar flares and CMEs. As it plays, I will explain a few definitions. A solar flare is an intense burst of light from the sun, and a CME, also known as a coronal mass ejection, is a massive cloud of charged particles. Now, why should we care? As we approach solar maximum, the peak of the sun's 11-year cycle, solar flares and CMEs will become more frequent. These events create awe-inspiring auroras and can also cause significant disruptions on Earth. For instance, solar flares and CMEs from last May led to flight diversions. Now, imagine an even stronger flare hitting us when the sun is directly facing Earth. The potential impact could be significant. Predicting solar flares is crucial. Accurate forecasts can protect astronauts from radiation, reduce exposure for airline crew and passengers near the poles, minimize GPS and navigation errors, inform decision makers to safeguard power infrastructure and prevent blackouts. A major solar storm could cost the US between 0.6 and 2.6 trillion US dollars, impacting hospitals, transport, and daily life. With our reliance on mobile phones and computers, maintaining connectivity is essential. That's why our team works to forecast these events and protect our technology and infrastructure. So solar flare prediction faces several challenges. First, the science behind the sun's behavior is complex. For example, these two images of the sun at different frequencies on the same day provide varying information and look different. We also notice more structure on the sun on the right there. Second, flare events don't happen often, creating a sample bias. This X-ray flux data highlights the difficulty in predicting X and M class flares, which are two classes that are more intense and rare due to the scarcity of data. This underscores the challenge posed by the rarity of these stronger flares, basically. Third, sun measurements are limited. While satellites monitor the sun, they don't always provide frequent measurements from optimal positions. This astronaut image shows why, and we can't send astronauts close to the sun to monitor it, as they would be exposed to dangerous levels of radiation and heat. Now, I'll pass the virtual mic to Hannah to talk about her solution. Thank you, Aishwarya, for highlighting why flare prediction is such a difficult task. My name is Hannah, and I'm going to talk about how Vigil can help. This video illustrates the unique vantage point of the Vigil mission. Vigil's position offers us a side view of the sun, a perspective that has previously only been possible when another spacecraft happened to be in the right place at the right time. This optimal position allows us to observe solar activities before they rotate into the Earth's field of view. As you see, Vigil will play a huge role in improving space weather forecast, and we need to start preparing now to use it to its full potential. That's why we need to answer three key questions throughout this project. The first question is, are there any hidden correlations in the data in which we can find potential precursors of solar flares? Answering this question will inform the instrument choice of the follow-up mission Vigil 2. 
Our second question is, can we increase the lead time of solar flare prediction? Early predictions have previously been limited by the sun's rotation. More precisely, we were just not able to see the part of the sun that would be facing us in a few days. Having vigil, we will be able to observe an active region five days in advance, allowing us to extend the lead time significantly. The third question is, can we increase the accuracy of solar flare predictions? The state of the art can only tell us if there will be a flare at any point in the next 24 hours. Additionally, even though scientists have been trying to solve this problem for decades, accuracy is still a big issue. In order to help mitigate the effects of solar flares, we need to be confident in the predictions we make. Imagine switching off our infrastructures just to find that it was a false alarm. So how do we answer these questions? We propose our modular framework for solar flare prediction that we call Helio Watch. Helio Watch allows us to efficiently experiment with the three different factors that affect our predictions. The input, the model itself, and the labels we're providing our models with. Solar flare prediction can be based on different types of input data. Useful information is, for example, contained in magnetograms or EV images showing different wavelengths of light. In terms of models, the machine learning community has provided us with a jungle of different solutions. Finding the one most suitable for this task is a challenge in itself. Last but not least, choosing the labels, which might seem straightforward at first, is actually one of the most challenging aspects. Compared to typical machine learning problems, we have a limited amount of data. This issue significantly increases the importance of finding the best way to formulate meaningful labels. All of this leaves us with a lot of experiments to run. And I'll now hand over to Fexen to show you how HeliaWatch makes this possible. Thank you, Hannah. Hi, everyone. I'm Fexen. Now I'm going to present you a demo of our results. We have developed a pipeline that is able to take in various different data sources as an input. On top of that, we can also plug in different models for training. Essentially, there are three outputs that we can learn out of our pipeline. The most informing inputs, the lead time in hours, and the accuracy of our predictions compared to other baselines and true values. So we are not only developing more reliable forecasting models, we are also gaining deeper insights into the fundamental physics of the sun's behavior. Here, we are going to speak about some setup for one of our experiments. For illustration purpose here, this is part of our data preparation. A star denotes a flare. All the circles are the sun images. When they're in white, it means that they have been labeled as no flare. And in blue, the label is flare. Taking the standard approach in the community, we label the sun images, which are 24 hours before the flare, with the label flare, and proceed similarly for the next flares in the given period of time. We've experimented with various inputs and used the model called ResNet50 to predict whether a flare will happen within the next 24 hours. ResNet50 is a neural network commonly used for visual applications. Here are some initial results from this experiment for a lead time of 24 hours. In line with expectations, we find that the most relevant precursor to solar flares can be found in magnetograms. Here you can see the three components of the sun's magnetic field, and the star represents the location from where a flare is launched. In this plot at the bottom, it shows how the true label changes with respect to the date. Zero means no flare, and one means flare. Following the standard practice, as I mentioned before, the label is as well one for 24 hours before the actual flare. Stars denote the flares. The vertical dashed line shows the time at which the magnetogram images above were taken. And now we compare our predictions in blue. We show our prediction accuracy in terms of probability. We can see that from October 19 to 20, our prediction in blue rises as we approach the actual flare denoted by the first star. For the second and third stars, which indicate the other flares, the model has accurately predicted even up to a day in advance. These initial results have provided us a lot of insights, and certainly there is still room to improve. Now, for future plans, I'll hand it over to Dominika. Uh, thank you, Fexen. My name is Dominika, and as it's been mentioned, we've only just scratched the surface of what our pipeline is capable of offering. Our work so far has laid a solid foundation for what's next, and our future plan plans include building upon our current outputs and lessons learned. Through the project, we realized that labeling can be a big problem. Predicting flares is complex because they are rare and often happen in groups. So far, we've experimented with the labeling method used by the heliophysics community, but we have a couple of ideas for different approaches. 
While it would be a paradigm shift, we believe that could help the model predict more accurately. Additionally, so far we've only run models with input from one viewpoint, so we plan to investigate data fusion, and the modular pipeline we set up allows for that. Finally, in the next couple of weeks, we aim to investigate more combinations of the pipeline setup to increase prediction accuracy and gain insights into the underlying solar physics. We believe that if we increase the prediction lead time and accuracy with just one viewpoint, we can create a solution that could potentially be run on board of a satellite. To recap, why does it matter so much? Throughout history, we have seen that solar storms can wipe out telegraph systems worldwide, cause power grids to fail, leaving millions of people uh, without electricity, and cause satellite failures. Now we are becoming even more dependent on our electronics. Moreover, we plan to create a lunar gateway and a lunar base, and both of which would be hugely vulnerable to the effects of CMEs in terms of the electronic failures, but also um, astronaut radiation exposure. Thus, we need a system that will tell us when a flare risk is high and when to take action, such as turning off our power grids or shielding inside the lunar base. Fortunately, with the upcoming Vigil mission and the Helio Watch, we are getting closer to addressing these challenges. Thank you so much for listening.